You are listening to Comedy Club for Kids presents. Radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense. Hey, 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 hey. Sorry, everyone, it's that time of the year and I have hay fever again. Achoo! Ah, I found out recently that hay fever oh, oh, is also called allergic rhinitis, which I think must be because when there's a rhino nearby, it just makes you sneeze, which seems to happen to me every single spring now. I mean, I have to say I can't see a rhino anywhere and I never actually do, so I can't quite explain it. And there's also no hay about either. So either the rhino has used the hay to disguise itself and they're both sneaking about outside Comedy Club for Kids HQ, or maybe I accidentally got some rhino and hay on my clothes when visiting the big hay rhino theme park that I like to go to every single weekend. Oh, it's brilliant there. There's um, there's rhinos. There's also loads of hay and you can sit on the hay or wave at the rhinos and wave at the hay and not sit on the rhinos. That is not allowed. It's very very dangerous. Um, but I love to go there every spring because it's the best time to go to the big Hay Rhino theme park. Um, it's just such a shame as it always coincides with me sneezing knots and my allergic rhinitis. Yeah, it's so unfair. Ah, shoo! Ah, well, I hope you're not allergic to great podcasts because, yes, this is Radio Nonsense once again, the official comedy club for kids podcast suitable for all ages from... <laughs> to... And everything in between. And this week, I have to delve into our Comedy Club for Kids mailbag again once my eyes have stopped watering from all the rhino allergies. I wonder if the farting rhinos affect it. No, they can't do, because I keep them really well padded on the shelf with all that hay. Should cancel it out. Anyway, um, you've sent in loads of stuff once again, which is brilliant. Thank you. Uh, you're probably wondering why we have a mailbag when I always ask you to email in. You don't really need to put emails in a mailbag because they're on a computer. But I don't actually have a computer at Comedy Club for Kids HQ. We just have a card board box that has a sort of bit cut out of it to look like a screen and some buttons drawn on it and sometimes the neighbour's cat just sits in it so it's like I've got a computer that can only look at cats which is what loads of people do anyway so you know I thought there's no real need for me to get a proper one anyway what I mean is all your emails because they can't come here they go to a special office that sorts them all out and then they deliver those emails here in post form they have to write them out by hand as letters um, sometimes they send them by carrier pigeon sometimes they just write them on a brick and throw them at the door it's very exciting basically and I love it um, Linda Linda have we had any more deliveries today Linda Linda who is Linda where is Linda Anyway, um, in this week's mailbag, we have this amazing joke from Rise, which is an excellently cool name. And I do hope one day, Rise, you meet someone called Shine and then you can have a double act and you'd be brilliant. Um, Rise is seven and from Virginia. And let me read this to you as it really made me laugh. What do you get if you cross a lion with a yak? A maniac! Ah, (laughs) brilliant! I reckon a maniac would be amazing. Quite scary, though. I mean, imagine if lions were the size of yaks. They'd just eat everyone. Or maybe they'd be more yak than lion, and they'd just eat grass, but they'd have lovely, lovely hair. It's very hard to tell. But superb wordplay, Rise. That is a brilliant joke. Thank you for sending it in. And I'm really pleased you didn't cross a rhino with anything, because, uh... Hey, uh... Achoo! Sorry, I can't even I can't even mention rhinos. Achoo! Because uh, it's that bad. It's really bad at the moment. Although if you crossed a rhino, achoo! And a lion, then you'd get a lino, which would just be a really boring floor. And I, I wouldn't be allergic to that. I'd just be bored. Also in the mailbag was a lovely review from Epic Red Lion, who I think is just a brilliant red lion and not a maniac. So sadly, we can't ask them any questions about what it is they eat. But thank you for the nice words nonetheless and for giving us a lovely review, Epic Red Lion. Um, And also to Rafi for his very nice email saying, I really like your podcast. It's really nice and funny and your podcasts are cool. Thanks tons, Rafi. And that is because I keep them in the fridge before releasing them. Keeps them fresh. Though when I came back from our little break recently and I opened the fridge, some of them smelled like they'd gone off. And then I realised just use the top fridge shelf to store even more stinky hippos and of course some of those achoo, uh, rhinos um i've got to stop talking about them uh, raffi did also send his amazing theories for the riddle that bella sent in some weeks ago about the man who turned into a poo um and look i would read it out to you but i think it needs its own separate detective podcast because it is far far too clever for this one but I think maybe he sold the riddle. Um, Don't forget, if you've also solved that riddle from a few episodes back, um, or you just have anything you want to send into this show, whether it's jokes or something you want to say, or very importantly, questions that you want comedians to answer. We really need some new ones, and I'm especially asking for questions from you listeners who haven't sent one in yet. Then please do get in touch by asking your nearest blabbering gib face, 
I'm sorry, grown-ups. So help you get in touch at podcast.comedyclub4kids.co.uk and then I'll get them several weeks later in our mailbag or by delivery sausage or beamed into the HQ using lasers. I mean, who knows what they'll do next time. It's always really exciting. Last week, um, you might remember I told you all about our brand new Radio Nonsense t-shirts that we're now selling at comedyclubforkids.store and we've added even more designs including a farting animals t-shirt and a farting ducks one um, as well as a few others. Again, make sure you only check those out and buy all of them while supervised by your blabbering gib faces. I'm sorry, grown-ups. Um, I have actually had several grown-ups ask if they can get farting duck ones too in their size. Not yet. You get everything. So stop being selfish, you grown-ups. Everything's for you, isn't it? All the time. You can just get t-shirts when you want, not kids. So at the moment, they're just for kids. But if enough blabbering gib faces want one, we'll do some grown-up sizes too. Do just let us know and I'll put them on sale. Um, you can also now get our Comedy Club for Kids book on the store, which teaches you how to be a brilliant stand-up comedian. So do grab one of those. And yes, all of them ship all over the world, hopefully by actual post and not by delivery sausage dog or, you know, sort of uh, via a carrier pigeon. Hopefully they'll just come in the normal post. Uh, head to Comedy Club for Kids store to go and have a look around. And this week, even more news. No, oh, this is very exciting. We have a competition. Yay! So the Brilliant Britannica magazine is a very clever magazine for 7 to 11 year olds and it can help you become experts in everything from space uh, to animals to inventions and weird facts. So, you know, a bit like this podcast, but sort of actually helpful, I suppose. Um, And recent issues uh, that they've answered have been like, when will humans travel to Mars or how many kilograms of poo are pooped by people every second? I don't know if there's been any rhino based questions, but maybe I should find out how... You know, how many sneezes a chew that a rhino chew makes you do if they're in the. I should probably ask. Anyway, it's also full of quizzes, puzzle recipes, and tons of fun stuff. And on this podcast, on Radio Nonsense, we are giving away three six month subscriptions to that magazine. So if you'd like to win the Britannica magazine delivered to you for free for six months, then just email me at podcast at comedy club for kids dot co dot uk with the weirdest favourite fact that you know, and I will pick the three best ones. And if you'd like to check out the Britannica magazine, you can find an order at britannicamagazine.co.uk. And I can't wait to read your facts. I'm very excited to learn some weird stuff. Um, I'm afraid this competition is open to UK residents only. Sorry about that, the rest of the world. But if you live elsewhere and you want to send me your facts anyway, then I would love to read them. So do feel free to send those in too. Oh, well, I haven't sneezed for at least 12 ant years now, so I think it's safe to get onto the most important bit of the podcast, which is the. Uh, 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 Joe! <laughs> I'm allowed. I am very excited to have with me on today's show Ruth Bratt, who is more well known as Ruth Bratt with the world's largest hat, T. Ruth Bratticles, or as she's known in Malayalam, Librarian Mare Sumband Hitcham Talam Val. But of course, Ruth, all of our listeners will know you for your globally popular catchphrase, nope, I ain't doing a roly-poly, your Oscar for playing the part of the building just to the left of the Empire State Building, and of course, for your extensive research into just why whale songs don't ever have remixes. Um, Ruth, it is, it is a joy to have you on the show. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. It's lovely to be here. Very excited. Oh, good. I'm so I'm so pleased. I know you've got a lot on. I know you're very I have, busy. But I, I just won't be doing any roly polies. Just so you know. Oh, I didn't. I didn't think you were going to say it because I, I. I'm so pleased you said. It. I was worried. I didn't want to ask because I know. You know, it's like when sometimes when bands get asked to do their favourite song, they're like, "No, we're bored." Yeah, of it. no, I know. I, I, I mean, it's a, it's a catchphrase because it's just I. I feel like it's a thing you need to get out first before mm. anyone asks because people are always yes. asking for that right and and I, I just yeah always but the second thing people ask how are you will you do a roly-poly so uh, I get in there it's, it's kind of annoying because they know you're going to say or they because they, if you did a roly-poly they'd, they'd be disappointed they would they would they'd be massively yeah. disappointed P- partly because I can't do a roly-poly uh, sure. <laughs> so it would be... I did want I did want to ask if it came from some real inability to roly poly or if actually you're so good at it that you don't want to blow people away with your roly poly expertise uh, i'm gonna say it's because i'm so good at it mm. but actually that's a lie and it's just that i physically can't do them sure sure because uh my feet don't like leaving the floor i don't do a yeah. lot of jumping i don't do a lot of leaping mm. um flying any flying flying i mean flying is probably my easiest because uh, then you've at least got the wings, you know. But yes, uh, yeah, true. I generally yeah. try and keep at least one foot hopping. That's all oh, right. Of course. You know. Yes. Yeah. Would you, 
because like when you see sort of like astronauts in space, they regularly both their feet leave the floor quite easily. Would that would that upset you? It terrifies me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've right. got to keep at least one foot on the floor at all times. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, you, you might just you might float off. That's a really good point. You know, I'd never noticed because sometimes I do worry that, like, especially um, like my daughter jumps a lot, and and sometimes she jumps, and I think, what if she just like just you know flew off to the ceiling i'd have to like get a hook or something bring her back down yeah what if you just didn't come back down from a jump yeah because i think all this gravity stuff might just be might just be a a bit of a a con (laughs) right yeah i mean well no one's yeah i mean it's one of those things that everyone tells you about but i I haven't seen gravity i I haven't haven't seen seen it anywhere and also when you ask someone to explain gravity they go well no one really knows what gravity is and you're like oh Okay, it's one of those, is yeah. it? Which to me means it's not real. And we probably only have gravity because we all think it's there. And if enough wow. of us stopped believing in it, would we all just float off? <laughs> <laughs> but then the danger is, I do we... Because I really, I would like to test this theory out, but I'm terrified that were we all to stop believing in it, we'd all just float away. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um and it's then, one thing with if you don't believe in fairies, then they aren't there. they might not take your tooth away, they might not you know, whatever. But if you stop believing in gravity and then we all float off, that's quite serious. I mean, that is quite serious. It is very serious. And I mean, at least then we'd know, but what would be the point of knowing as we all float off yeah. into the ether? Although, like, you know, it could be lovely up in the ether, who knows? <laughs> It could be. I think birds would get really annoyed because they'd be like, "Oi, this is our bit." Yeah, and we work yeah. really hard to stay up here with these wings, and you lot are just yeah floating up. Also, everything would float up. Oh, that that would make having lunch really messy. Yeah, yeah, especially with soup. Pets. Yeah, yeah. Would we just sort of orbit? You know, like, um, which is the one with the rings? Is it Sat- Saturn's got the rings, isn't it? Yeah, rings yeah. Just sort of debris. They kind of <laughs> circle it. Would we all just be like a ring around the Earth? Just sort of this kind of de- human and, and pet and, and lunch debris just floating around, going, ah, just endlessly around the planet. I'd sort of love it if that did happen. <laughs> <laughs> it would look quite pretty, wouldn't it? It's um, very pretty. Just a bunch of people sort of swimming through. Yeah, yeah. Rings of but then I worry, like Earth itself wouldn't look. If 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 you're saying everything would float up, that would be even like the sea, the trees. So like Earth itself would just look like a sort of rock. It would be a bit horrible. It would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, I haven't thought through gravity. That that mm. I'm not. I'm not a scientist. Uh, I'll just. <laughs> yeah. No, but I don't you've know if got you to thinking that. because like the big thing about gravity is always what goes up must come down. But then like I've let go of a balloon before and it hasn't. So exactly, exactly. You know, explain that science. <laughs> 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 oh wow, wow. I mean, I I didn't know there was so much, you know, and, and I I feel like this is going to sound a bit um uh sort of demeaning, which I don't want it to, but I didn't realize there was so much depth to your roly poly comment. Yeah, it's, you know, it... people think it's just you know like a flippant remark. No, there's there's real scientific thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, real real science. It's real wow. science. <laughs> Well, I am really pleased you're not going to do a roly poly. I, I wouldn't <laughs> want any of that to happen during our conversation. We've got important questions to ask, and I, I'm worried you might float off mid conversation. I'm sort of um, I'm, I've got anchors. Have you? Yeah, I always have, have anchors. To... <laughs> How big? Because are... I, I can't see. Because obviously we're talking. I can't see your feet. Are they quite? Are they sort of like ships anchors, or have you got sort of smaller human anchors? Uh, I've got one ships anchor at the back. And then um, on my feet, like you know those, um, you know those boots that they used to wear to go diving in. Yes, Which wasn't really yeah. diving so much as just sinking. <laughs> yes, yes. So I've got sinking those sinking boots. Sinking yeah. boots. I've got sinking boots on, just in case. Just in case gravity gives up. <laughs> right. That's a, wow. That's a really good. That's a really good plan. And you, you do make. They are sinking boots. Did they used to when they wanted to come back up? Do they just take their shoes off? 
and sort of float back this up. is what I was trying to work out like when you see those suits and you go well it makes sense that you'd wear heavy heavy boots to yeah. get down to the bottom because it wasn't diving it was just like oh yeah. <laughs> um and but then it's like well yeah how do you get back up and if they did just take their boots off does that mean there were just like Hundreds of pairs of boots on the ocean floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, <laughs> say, like as you're sinking, you don't. If they're so heavy, I'd imagine you can't really control where you go. So, what if you like landed on a shark's head or something? Like, there'd be there'd be all this fish going. Oh no, there's a big boot. The boat, the boat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they didn't think it through. They didn't no. think it through. No, yeah, I do wonder. There must there. be lots of that stuff at the bottom of the sea, though, right? Like, yeah. From Victorians coming up with ideas and then going, whoa. <laughs> you know? Rubbish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's, yeah. What have you got? Pirate ships, old old sort of ghosty ships. Yeah. Uh, just generally ships, I suppose. And then Sh- boots. Ships lots and of boots. boots. Yeah. There'd be a lovely tour you, could, you should be able to do where you, you land into a pair of boots and then go have a walk on a ship. Oh yeah, yeah. Something to Someone should come up with that idea and sell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It won't be me. No. I, I don't like the sea. I don't like being. I don't. I. I. I've got this thing with the sea. I like going for a, sw- a little bit of a swim in the sea, and then every now and then I think I don't know what's beneath me. That's it what might I be think. A giant monster, and then I have to get out. Yeah, I'm the same. I do like really like Zen you know, like floating. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm floating and I'm communing with the world and the planet. And then I yeah. suddenly go, oh, but what is under here? And then all the Zen goes and then I can't. Yeah. I can't. Because if you can't see the bottom. <laughs> no, it was a bit much. I, I Some years ago, is this going to sound very, very fancy? And it wasn't as fancy as it sounds. But I did one of those swimming with dolphins things. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. meant to be this beautiful experience. And what happens is you get on a boat and then in the middle of the sea, they go, get off the boat. And you go, but it's the middle of the sea. And then they go, there's some dolphins swimming, swim with them. And you go, oh, they're really fast. Oh, they've gone. Oh, now I'm just in the middle of the sea. This is really stressful. It was terrible. I didn't like it at all. And dolphins don't want to swim with you. They don't care. No, they don't they're just getting on with their day, aren't they? Yeah. They're like, what's yeah. this thing with legs? Yeah. Yeah. At least he hasn't got those boots on. They're <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Ruth, it's is, is a joy to have you. Have you, have you, have you, uh, you, you know, obviously you've got the catchphrase. What else have you been up to? Have you got much going on? Got you know bits and bobs, uh, mm. trying to trying to um, bits and bobs, bits yeah. bobs, all those things. Yeah. I've got mm. a cat who takes up a lot of my time. All oh, right. The cat is sort of takes up all of my time. My friend's kid came around and looked looked after him while I was away, and uh, my cat's are quite miserable. <laughs> Doesn't like anyone. Now my friend sent me pictures of him kissing my friend's daughter. He loves her. What? And it, yeah. And I was like, what? what is this? And then she said, my, my friend's daughter said, um, I'd like to come and live at Ruth's house, please. And uh, now said, well, really? Why? And she went, because it's um, all about the cat. <laughs> I wow. was like, I mean, she's not wrong. I did say, I don't think you would like it in practicality because there's never any food and you would have to sort of forage for yourself quite a lot or eat the weird stuff that I eat. You know, which is like, what's in the fridge? Oh, there's a carrot. I'll eat that. What's <laughs> what's in it? Where's the tins? Oh, does anyone want a tin of chickpeas for lunch? Yeah. <laughs> but that is how there are famous for some of the listeners you may not know about chefs like uh, Heston Blumenthal, who makes weird, weird food like snail. Oh, no, he makes like bacon and egg ice cream or like snail. Snail porridge. Something. Snail porridge, yeah. yeah. And like, so he's he's very strange and he looks a bit like an egg with a face. And he, but I think that's how he came up with all his fancy recipes by going, what yeah. is left in my fridge? Oh, I've got, well, bacon and eggs and some ice cream. I'll put them together. Yeah, see, the difference is, is that he makes nice things mm. and I don't right i remember once i was trying to impress a boy and i I, I made i was like come around i'll cook for you (laughs) and i cooked him um 
spaghetti bolognese, but I didn't have any meat. So I used um, lentils or something. But then I went, oh, I wonder what it would taste like with cinnamon in it. Oh, and no. what I'm going to tell all of you is that it doesn't taste very nice. And <laughs> he was being really polite and he was sitting there going, mm, 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 mm. and then I took a bite and went, ah, oh, this is the most disgusting thing anyone's ever made. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't think he was very impressed with me at all. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm really glad that- sorry. But Hester, you know, these famous chefs must have had those stages that we don't know about where they just yeah, made they lots of recipes played. where everyone went, what is that? disgusting. <laughs> so, yeah, you I'm know. terrible. I really try and then I do something and then I go, oh, no, you've gone a step too far with that one, mate. You know? But that's important. You're You're discovering, like you have just saved thousands of children from ever putting cinnamon in spaghetti bolognese and i exactly. think that's you know you're doing this and and that means that, that the rest of us don't have to and i think that's exactly. that's heroic i will yeah. suffer for you yeah yeah, yeah. and I, I do a lot of that you know and sort of the kind of oh this has been open for a while but i'm sure it's still fine and then <laughs> put it in something <laughs> that it's not fine it's not yeah. fine I but always see that with yogurt, where I always think, I'm sure this yogurt's fine, I'm sure it smells fine, and then the first spoonful will be, like, green. I'll go, oh, no. Oh, no, it's I not just, fine. I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. I had that, because when I had I had the COVID, and uh, and I lost my sense of taste and smell, and uh, and I made myself a cup of tea, and I went, ooh, lovely cup of tea. And I did that thing that you always do. I think everyone does it. You get the milk, sniff the milk, and I went, oh, I can't smell it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was happily drinking my cup of tea that I couldn't taste. And then about I don't know five minutes into the cup of tea, I I actually looked at the cup of tea. Oh no! And there were all the little chunks. <laughs> oh no! Oh, that's so horrible. Oh no! That's so horrible. But I like to feel like the the one thing that COVID did was give all those like gone off foods a place to go. Like you know all these all these gone off foods we look at them and we're like, oh it's got mold on and they're feeling well oh, I just wanted to be eaten. Yeah. And luckily then loads of people lost their sensation as well and, and they got eaten, they had a place to go. And yeah, that's nice. I, you know? I did eat a lot of off food, I think. Because it was wow. I couldn't tell. And everything tasted of nothing. So it was like a really lovely <laughs> a really lovely part of the food in my fridge. <laughs> Extra texture. And and you never know what nutrients and um vitamins you might get from those new creatures that grew on your food. Exactly. My my great nan used to say, it's just a bit of penicillin, dear. <laughs> and as we know, penicillin's good for you. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's why if you go to hospital and need penicillin, they just get some old mouldy cheese and rub it on your face. Exactly. And then you're fine. <laughs> and then you're fine. <laughs> we all know that's true. <laughs> that is it. That is it. Um, penicillin. I, 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 I really, I've got some important questions, but I have to ask before we get to them, what is your cat called? Casper. Casper, that's a great name. Casper, for a cat. yeah, he would. Uh, he came with the name, and I thought I'd change it um, because he was a rescue cat, and it, so he right. came with the name. And I thought, oh well, I'll change his name. But he knows his name, mm. so I was like, oh well, we'll keep his name. And he is actually. I mean, you know, obviously, he has many names, uh, yeah. as all yeah. cats are. Mm. Uh, so he's Casp, Caspi, Idiot. Uh, you know, depending on what time he wakes me up. Yeah. <laughs> At five yeah. o'clock, he's idiot. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bubba, Bub, Boise, the boy. Mm. <laughs> he is a many named cat. But the only one he actually replies to is Casper. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And no surname? You haven't given him a, you haven't gone for the... I didn't give him a surname. I've always wanted to... So one of the reasons I wanted to change his name is because I've always wanted to have... Um, a cat called Sigourney Weaver and a dog called Neville Chamberlain. And, um, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. uh, So one day this will happen and I will have a dog called Neville Chamberlain, who I think in my head is a whippet. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. That's wonderful. I heard this week about a dog called Sophie Ellis Barkster. (laughs) And I think that's the most brilliant name I've heard in a while. (laughs) That's brilliant. So good. I know. 
I just think people should go all out. Their pets, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, you don't want to embarrass your pet, but they, but yeah. they deserve really good long names. They it's, do, uh, they do. I mean, yeah. I, I did know someone who said you should never call an animal by a human name. And I was like, well, who's to say that the human names were first? Exactly. Maybe they were dog names before. And I think giving a dog a full, or a cat, full, the full name. Um, yeah. You know, like we've been trying to work out what Casper's um, accent is, um, and we think we think he might be a very very posh elderly gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> <Can I? laughs> I've come in now. <laughs> uh, uh, I was wondering if there was any tuna fish on the menu this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I do. Yeah, I feel like a lot of cats have got uh, just because of how they are. I always feel like they've got a snooty. Like, oh, do you want but, me to come inside? But hmm. is it? And and then when they come in and you're you're not sort of you're like, oh, you're not ready for me. I thought you'd be yeah. ready for me. I'm here. Is there no lap? <laughs> <laughs> the most he'll do that. He'll like corral you into the place that he wants you to be. I, 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 I do get this feeling, and maybe, maybe I'm wrong here, but your, your friend's daughter who looked after him, I'm fairly certain that were she to live with you, he'd not be anywhere near as nice to her, and it's simply because she doesn't live with you that he is. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And he, he knows exactly what he's doing as well, because um, I go away on tour a lot, and I have to, you know, he's, he's been um, looked after by a lot of different people. He doesn't, he's very picky about who he likes. He doesn't, um, he's not a big fan of men. We're not sure why, um, but he get he's very like ooh, ooh, and sort of walks off. Um, but with women, he'll sort of come in and go oh, hello, and he'll sort of you know flirt around a bit and then leave. Um, but if I'm here, he prote- he he genuinely pretends to be scared because if I'm here, he's like oh no, there's another person in the house, I must leave immediately, and he goes off. He's like I think he's like an old <laughs> ham actor basically. But if I'm not here and someone comes in, he's like, oh, hello, how lovely to see you. And he's that's like, amazing. But the, yeah, he's like, he's like a proper old ham actor. He's, oh, maybe that should be his name. He should be Sir John Gielgud or something. You know, like, oh. <laughs> Oliver Reed cat. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's very good. I like yeah. that. My, my friend's cat, um, Zeppi, when I used to go and feed uh, her, she, um, she, what well, well, I learned about this afterwards that that cats, if they don't think you're capable of hunting, they have to prove to you that they're better. So I turn up to feed the cat, and she'd have brought in a frog, as if to go, um, actually, I can do this myself. I don't trust you. <laughs> so I turn up with the cat food, and she'd have a frog in her mouth that was just going ah, <laughs> and she'd go Puh, and spit the frog on the floor, look at me with disgust, and then leave. <laughs> And, and it was like, a, and I was always tempted, like, should I turn up with, like, I don't know, a bear or so, something like just, actually, I can deal with this. So, boom. <laughs> yeah. Right, Ruth, I've got some really important questions to ask you. And, and you know, but before I get to the most important ones, um, you know, this is an audio podcast. I don't know if you know that, uh, but generally our listeners listen to this. Uh, mm. and, and often, as I always say, they I think they listen with their ears. They might listen with their bums or their knees or their elbows. I don't, we don't discriminate Who on knows? the show. Yeah however they want to listen to it. Um, but I just wondered, because it is an audio podcast, if you had a favourite noise that you could either tell us about or indeed even make. Uh, do you know what my, my absolute favourite noise is? is? Is this noise. I love it because it, it, it means you never have to say anything. And I've been trying to uh, do it in text. How, you make, how do you make that noise? And, and I came up with lots of P's, L's, R's and P's. But it's not quite right because there's no R in. But it's yeah. the best noise. P's, P's, L's, R's, and yeah, you're, yeah. But it's the that that's my favourite note. I love it because also, like, if someone says something to you and you don't agree with it, you can just go oh, and you don't have to say anything else. <laughs> and everyone knows what you mean. You know, like if someone goes oh, how's it going, and you just go oh. <laughs> Also, and this is genuinely true. I did a I did a um a radio show with my brilliant friend Lucy Trot, and um we spent a day 
auditioning fart noises because we wrote a character who farted a lot and we oh spent a whole day listening to fart noises and going no that one's too wet oh no that one's a bit loud <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> and then and then we had to spend because we couldn't find the one we wanted we had to spend about an hour trying to make the exact fart noise we wanted on our arms on our with us <laughs> it was wow. everyone took a go at it and it was genuinely and it was work. And I could, and you know, this was my work today. <laughs> I was paid to make noises for hours. Uh, that's that the, that's like the dream job. It is. You know, like little like noises and all that. Just it, it, the best day. The best day. Hey, kids. What did you discover the ideal one was then? Can I, I, mean, I don't know how, it might be quite hard for you to recreate, but was there a... Was there, there was an, an ideal, ideal one sort of... that kind of had like a... It had like a, it, like it was nice and full, but it had like a little squeak at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't think I can do with my mouth. Uh, but you know the ones that go, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the ones that have several tones to them are always, yes. always the very best. Tonal yeah. musical farts. Uh, oh, so yeah, amazing. I think I think those might be my favourite noises. It's it's what it's a wonderful noise, and I think that you, what you've really made me realise is, is more conversations should have raspberries in, and and I think about things like in in politics, and there's one person I think blah blah, and the other one's going there there there, and if they actually just went well I think, and the other one went, <laughs> that would be a much better. People would be so much more interested in it. I'd watch that debate. Someone just yeah. go oh, you know yeah, it's all the great. time. Yeah. Also, I love that it's called a raspberry blowing a raspberry. Mm. Yeah. Because you're like, why yeah. is that a raspberry? Well, yeah, because is. if you ever t- picked up a raspberry and sort of uh, uh, blew in it like it was an instrument, it wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't make that noise. At all. No. And even when you squash them, it's not like they're like, they're not noisy, they're not noisy fruits, are they? Raspberry. No, they're quite disappointing as, as a, as a noise making uh, machine. Very tasty as, as a fruit, but disappointing as a, I, I wouldn't want to see an orchestra of raspberries. No, I, I imagine it would be. I mean, how would they hold the violins? Yeah, really, really tough, actually. Really tough, yeah. Squashed by a cello. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> It'd be really quite tragic. All these raspberries ready to play. And it, uh, just it, and The conductor would wave their... Well, they wouldn't wave their arm. There'd be a raspberry, but they'd, they'd move one of their raspberry bits and then everything would just... So they wouldn't even go. Oh, it'd be, this is terrible! I no one makes this ever. This is rubbish. <laughs> the best orchestra in the world. <laughs> then the audience could sit there and go. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, wow, that's beautiful. What a beautiful image. Terrible at the same time. Um, uh, okay, Ruth, the other thing that I have to check with you, obviously, is that this is a family-friendly podcast, so it's suitable for any age you can imagine, really. Can you imagine an age? Um, yeah, I've imagined four ages now. Oh, that wow, all four, four ages four as well. Four ages, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's suitable for all of them, unless you've imagined right. 100, in which case it isn't, it isn't suitable uh, for 100 years, but it's suitable for 101 onwards and everything up to 99. Oh, right, good, because not... I, I went over 100. Fine. Yeah, that's right. fine. Absolutely suitable for them. Um, and because it is suitable for all ages, apart from 100, long story, but apart from them, um, I just wanted to check if there are any rude words that you wouldn't be saying for this show. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a few rude words that I will not say. Um, barbecue. Oh. I'm so sorry. I won't say that one. Um, yeah. I also uh, won't say um, umber. No, no, don't say no. To please don't say umber. That umber, is... or um, what's another one? Kettle, kettle flange. Oh no, don't no. Please don't. These, these are. I mean, um, no. Please don't say. So it's barbecue, umber, kettle flange. Don't say any of those. Yeah. Because I, I worry that I'd have to destroy this podcast. Frigidaire. No, and well, depends on what context you're using it. I think. Right, you're an awful frigidaire. Yeah, don't no, don't, don't say, that. say that. No, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that would that would cause a lot of problems. I think we get a lot of complaints. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Well, thank you. No, no. Thank. Well, thank you for not saying them. And I also won't say. I definitely won't say Frigidaire. Um, I, I mean, won't say Umber. Actually, yeah. Umber, so, Umber's yeah. pretty bad. I feel yeah, bad about that. 
Sorry. Yeah, well, well no, it's, it's, no, don't, don't apologise. I'm, I'm pleased you won't be saying them on the show. So I, uh, Compost? Oh. Uh, I, I mean, I think that's, on... you know, on the line. Isn't yeah, it? that's on the line, but I suppose it depends on what country our listeners are listening to this in because there are some countries where if you if you were to shout compost at someone, they'd uh, probably yeah. prison, I think. Um, probably, or, or you'd get sent to the moon. Yeah. And that's what I've heard anyway. But um, Steamer? Uh no, I would. I mean, I wouldn't risk that. I okay. Risk, yeah. God, yeah. there's a lot of yeah. words that I'm not allowed. There to... are. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot that you can say. You yeah. know. Um, you could say blamange. Oh well then, uh, so, blamange is the one I'll use, but not yeah, angel so, delight, yeah. as we know. Well, no, ex yeah, exactly. So yeah. you know, there's, there's, there's. It's, it's fine for every word you can't say. There's another word you can say. I wouldn't, you know, don't, don't worry about it as long as you don't accidentally say frigidaire um, or, or frigidaire, you know, or bar definitely not barbecue. So, thank barbecue. you, please, for for being sensitive yeah. to this show's age range. Um, now, listen. The reason I've got you on the show, apart from it just being a delight to have you here, in in between all all your not roly polying, um, is we're being sent two questions from. Uh, and I believe this is their name, Cheesy Puff, uh, and they say they they are age one million. Oh, um, so they're right on the right on the um, age range you're after. Yes, yes, and I'd have thought, you know, I, I maybe I'm 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 a bit uh, mm. stereotyping here. I'd have thought if you'd been alive for one million years, you'd know the answers to a lot of things. But, but yeah, I wouldn't think you'd have any you... questions left, eh? Yeah, that's what you'd think, but but the, the cheesy that. puff has got t two questions. In maybe fact, that's the I thing. Know. Maybe we, maybe we, as we age, we know less. Very possible. Yeah, very possible. And and I suppose it depends what you spent those million years doing. If you were just, if you put on those diving boots and you're just stuck at the bottom of the sea, you'd know you a know. lot about the ocean. Yeah, or one, or you'd know ocean. a lot about one specific bit of. <laughs> <laughs> Just the one, the one little bit you can see, and yeah, nothing else. So, you know, who knows? Maybe that's what Cheesy Puff has been doing for, for a million, yeah. million years. Yeah. <laughs> Just sitting in a pair of boots in one, <laughs> in one little tiny quadrant. Uh, oh. And also, when you're down deep, like apparently it's quite dark down there, so you wouldn't have much visibility. Oh, you'd probably just be looking at your own shoes going, why do I put these well, <laughs> Yeah. How'd you get these things off? It's taken them a million years to <laughs> take yeah, off their boots. Wow. Well, poor Cheesy Puff. I, yeah. I, I, I hope, I hope that's that. not the case. <laughs> um, would, so Cheesy Puff's asked two questions, and, and I think we'll go for the conventional. I'll, I'll tell you them in order rather than sort of backwards or, or upside down or anything. Yeah. And you know, um, But the first question, I must stipulate, this has, I didn't count them, but I think it's got approximately 80 to 90 question marks after it. And I'll try and um, replicate that in the way I asked the question. Yeah. But I probably can't. So I just, you know, I don't want to uh, disappoint. Um, but the question number one from Cheesy yeah. Puff, age one million years old, is what is bee bottoms? <laughs> so I hope that was like 80 to 90. I think that was definitely marks. 80 to 90. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> So, R Ruth, what is bee bottoms? Well, I mean, I'm assuming you mean what is the bottom of a bee? Now, there's the question. Yeah. Is the bottom of a bee the underside of the bee or is it the oh. bee bottom? Is it the bit wow. with the stinger on it? If it's the bit with the stinger on it, then what is a bee bottom? It's a dance. It's a dance uh, area. You know they do that. You know they do bees they dance. Do the waggle, the waggle. waggle. Is it called the waggle dance? Yeah, waggle yeah. dance. Do the waggle. I'm a bit obsessed yeah. with bees. I don't know if you knew this about me. I'm obsessed no. with bees. I once, I, I once wrote a song called uh, "No One Can Be Sad When They're a Bee," and I used to, <laughs> I used to sing it dressed as a bee, <laughs> and then at the end, of, <laughs> and then at the end of the song, I would give the audience. Uh, a spoonful of honey each. That's. I think what you've done on on, on this week's podcast is that you've shown every child that you've got the best job in the whole widest world. <laughs> it's fart noises and pretending to be a bee. <laughs> Honestly, that's that's incredible. It was. Do you want to be an accountant? No one. No one. <laughs> if you could pretend to be a bee and give people honey off a spoon, <laughs> come on. Who doesn't want that? Um. Yeah, so I'm a bit obsessed with bees, and I once, I want there was a there's a woman who um makes bees out of uh 
she she's really clever she She gets like little bits of wool and she makes oh right you know you make you can make if you stab it with a needle don't do this kids but right. <laughs> so not, not real but i just need to reiterate you're not not real bees no no not she's real not bees. stabbing real not bees stabbing with a needle no. no it's not like not... get your own back you stung my foot i'm gonna jab you in the eye also because no. bees won't um bees won't sting you because they don't no. want to because bee bottoms this is the other thing if if you're talking about the bottom of the bee that is their bum with their stinger in it they don't want to sting you because if they sting you then they die yeah, which is, and, is really sad. Also, like, there's something really, like, honourable, like, well, with my last breath, I shall sting you on the thumb, I and know. then I shall depart this world. Not like yeah. wasps, because wasps are, like, willy-nilly, just a bit no. cross, right? No. no um, they're just I, quite I mean, cross. Like, I, to be honest, I mean, I know you had to bring up wasps, but I feel like it's almost unfair to bees that we've mentioned, like... Yeah, you know, this is about bee bottoms. About bee bottoms wasps, wasp they bottom. just they need to get on and do their own. They, in fact, they need to go away and do their own thing. Yeah, just get on with Not your own thing. Leave us be. Yeah. Leave the bees alone. Um, but I, I, so I think bee bottoms, bee bottoms are dancing, dancing uh, wonders. That's what bee bottoms are. Unless right. you're talking about the underside of a bee, which would be like some kind of fuzzy. Yeah, hairy like, leg holders. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hairy leg holders. I'd love to. Wouldn't you love to stroke a bee? They I look like they'd be very, bee. you know, very strokeable. Yeah, yeah. I Especially think they the look big, really cozy. You know, when you get the really huge bees, you almost like I could almost have that as a pet and and just like sit on your lap and you give it a little stroke. Yeah, a bit of sugar water. And yeah. then they come in and they're like, <laughs> so loud. <laughs> 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 There's that, that, that's the kind of bee I want. I love bees. In fact, I really planted some plants, which I'm looking at through the window now, specifically because they're good for bees. That's really nice of you. And and how do you, like, how do you know they're good of, of bees sort of let you know? Do they sort of put an order in? Yeah, they're like, we really would like some of those purple ones and those red ones. Um, yeah, they're pretty. The problem is, it's because of the cat, as we know. Um, there's a lot of things you can't have in the garden because of the cat, because cats are idiots. Well, no, not all. My cat is an idiot. And I I read this thing that was like, you know what? Cats won't eat things that make them sick. And I was like, great, all right. Uh, and I got myself a really lovely iris for the garden. And the first thing the cat did was start eating it. And I was like, mate, <laughs> <laughs> this is the one thing I like. That's classic cat going, you know nothing about me. I'm not going to follow your rules. I'm not going to follow your human rules. Yeah. yeah so, um, but, so yeah, so I have to be careful about what I put in that is good for bees, yeah. but not bad for cats. But they really like, I've got an apple tree. They love that. They have a good old, you know, yeah. thing around in the blossom. Um, fuchsias. And bee bottoms. Do you know what I think bee bottoms? What is bee bottoms? Bee bottoms is that thing that what I love is when they go into a flower and the, and you hear them going Gee, and then you can just see their little bum just wiggling and all excited because about. I love that that waggle dance thing is something I've always thought was amazing was they use it to direct other bees to where the pollen is and it's just always my dream of like I wish as human beings we directed people to places by w waggling our bum yeah so like if you had to jump into a taxi like where are you going oh well let me just wiggle my bum it's oh. over there you know and I think like yeah. do you know the way to this tourist destination uh, oh, here goes. wiggle 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 it's just a much better and more fun way to direct people. Please. That's how I'm going to do it from now on. If anyone asks me, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Well, I'll show you, and I'll yeah. do a little dance for them and see if they can work it out from the dance. Yeah, I think that's a great. Idea. I think it would improve everyone's life, especially if I did it dressed as a bee. Yeah, yeah. Well, and also like sat navs instead of a little picture, you could just have a bum wiggling yeah, just to where bum. you have to go. <laughs> Just a little bum on your dashboard, of your car dashboard that wiggles wherever you have to go. Exactly. And then if you take and, um, a wrong turn, it just goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's much more exciting. That is much more exciting. Um, I, I wanted to ask, I, I feel like you've answered this question already because you were dressed as a bee and you said, was it, what was the, the line? You never a sad day. No, when no a one can be sad when they're a bee. No one can be sad when they're a bee. Because I was going to ask, like, maybe you know what that i i didn't i hope this isn't what cheese buff meant for but maybe what what is what, what is bees bottoms i wonder if like what's the bottom what's oh, the bo like for a bee what's being at the bottom oh what's, what's that what's bottom happen 
Yeah, but maybe there isn't if bees are endlessly, if they can't I, be sad. I've never seen a sad bee. Unless, I think maybe rock bottom for a bee is, you know when they get, they, they, they've got a bit too much pollen on them and they're a bit like, oh, and they get all sad. <laughs> and, sort of, and you see them sort of walking on the floor like, oh. I think it's like, you know, when humans have, eat too much meat and they get the meat sweats. Maybe that's what it is. They're yeah. they getting the pollen sweats. <laughs> That's amazing. That's yeah, because yeah, oh, it's funny. Pollen always looks so light and fluffy, but I imagine that there's still a limit, isn't there? Well, yeah, and for, and that like, bees are pretty small in comparison to you know. Mm. So if I put you know some pollen on my finger, I'd be like, oh yeah, I can walk a couple of miles yeah. with this. But a bee, yeah. So, but I don't, I don't know what I, I don't think bees can be sad. They never look sad. They're always like. Bah, 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 bah. Busy. Do you think because I I get hay fever from pollen? Do you think there are any bees out there that also get hay fever and they sort of dive into a plant and then sneeze their way back out? <laughs> oh, imagine! There. Oh, that, that would be the saddest bee in the world. Yeah. This would get some pollen. A chew. Ah! They oh. they'd also fly back out with the force of it. They go in, a chew, ah! sneeze, fly back out. And shoot out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shoot, shoot up bum first, then if anyone's in the way, then that's a whole oh, other... Oh, disaster. It's quite a sad situation. Yeah. Oh, I think that's a, I think that's a book waiting to be written. <laughs> the bee with hay fever. The bee with yeah. hay fever. Mm. Oh, poor well, hay fever bee. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen. I just, I'm just sort of... I'm sure it doesn't. I mean... Sad days. Yeah. I'm sure... Maybe it does. Maybe this is what we need to look up. Do bees get hay fever? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, so much. Someone will have someone will have put that in the science next to gravity. I'm sure it'll be. It'll I'm be sure in it'll be in the science. It'll be in the science. Somewhere in the science. Who knew yeah, that that absolutely. question could have such a, you know, so well, no many layers. Susan Buff was asking it. You like know, an you, onion. for a million years, it's still you know that these there's so much to it that no wonder they hadn't answered it in, in all that time. Yeah. Um, and, and speaking of which, you know, I hope she's sort of satisfied with that. I think you're right that the, the bee bottoms are sort of lovely, waggly, dancey. Uh, I think that's the nicer way to to, to answer it. Um, but Cheesy Buff has also asked, and I should say it's only got one question mark, so perhaps less less important, less, less curious. Important. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but they've also asked, why don't cats burp? Well, I'm going to let you into a little secret. Cats do burp. What? Yeah, not like not like as as brilliantly as we do, but um, often my cat will um, drink too much water really fast, and then he comes and sits, and he likes to sit on me because uh, he jumps off the he jumps off the today the table where is well, it's not a table it's like a high sort of cabinet thing where his water is because he likes he likes to drink up high and he jumps off onto me and then he goes oh. <laughs> 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 oh. and it's uh and i can't it's 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 a burp it's got to be a burp oh. that's amazing yeah and it always Does worries it... me that it's the precursor to you know being like a, being sick or a furball, being sick or a furball. It... but it often yeah. isn't it's just him <laughs> Wow, yeah. is is uh this is the disgusting question? Does it smell like a burp? Because sometimes burps smell. Well, it's very hard with with cats to to differentiate the smells from them because cat mouths yeah. are a bit stinky. I mean, he's not yeah. too bad because he doesn't eat. I don't let him eat fish every day, and I don't, you know, and he doesn't have. He has dry food, so which is why he drinks so much water and then burps. Um, oh but it's not it's not as bad as a it's not as bad as you know like a cheesy crisp burp sure yeah. or you know when you've had you've had something to eat and then you have a really fizzy drink but you've eaten something with like garlic in it or something and then yes. you do one of those burps yeah. and you go oh no and you put your hand over your mouth but you know that as soon as you drop your hand that's gonna yeah, that's gonna so dissipate just mouth bomb the room yeah it's horrible yeah it's a horrible sensation i mean I, you, you sort of highlighted something there as well as I, I do wonder if we don't if cats don't burp as often because like you don't really get fizzy they don't really have fizzy drinks they don't drink you don't get drinks. i know cats don't really drink milk but you also don't get fizzy milk thankfully because it'd be yeah. disgusting well and it would probably you know. mean it was off wouldn't it yeah it yeah stupid. exactly mm -hmm. so like cats don't really have a have like sort of lemonade so no 
I mean, you know, to be, he probably would try it if I put it out. <laughs> Your cat would, yeah. A bit of that. Well, and <laughs> what he probably... does is he licks it, he goes, and then he goes, nah, and walks off. And I'm like, well, now I can't eat it because you've put your tongue all over yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But then that's, that's sort of protecting you from something that may be disgusting. Exactly. Um, Maybe he's like the royal taster. <laughs> well, he's seen what you get from your fridge and, and what you come up with. And so he's decided <laughs> yeah, that his yeah. job now is, well, I'd better save her from this. <laughs> <laughs> he's more clever than I knew. <laughs> That's yeah, it. maybe they that's don't burp because they don't drink fizzy drinks. Because that's what really yeah. makes you burp, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. I can't think of anything else that you have that makes... It's nearly always fizzy drinks, isn't well, it? Well, me and um, my mate, when I and I think I still have this. So this is how old I am. We used to uh, make uh, tapes of ourselves, like, you know, cassette tapes. Uh, and we used to do a, a, what we called a radio show which wasn't a radio show. It was just us this recording. For, for listeners, this is stuff that happened in the past. In the past. This is all like cassette tapes you could fix with a pencil. They were really They were strange. really good. And then when they got yeah. really old, they went like... <laughs> <laughs> that was great. They were yeah. really good. Um, and we we did a radio show. And one of, one of the things we did was a gulping contest, which was where we, um, we drank Ribena uh as loudly as we could so that it, <laughs> it got this is amazing. On the, and we did it for about i mean i think we did it for about 20 minutes and then it got terrible burps terrible burps because we've been gulping <laughs> <my dinner. laughs> and then my friend b was like i don't want to be sick <laughs> i don't think she was sick but uh we definitely burped for a good so it's it's just any air, isn't it? And maybe cats are a bit better at yeah. not gulping in air, and they're not yeah. trying to they're not trying to make radio shows where they gulp Ribena. Who does that? Who did we think was our listenership? That's the big question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think now probably all the listenership of Radio Nonsense are going to go and try that almost certainly and, was and it, find out. It was exactly a lot of fun. It. it was a lot. Yeah, of fun. it does sound like brilliant fun. It Who does could sound really the, good lo fun. the loudest? Afterwards. Could you ever do any of those fancy? I could never do. So I can't do pretend burps, and I've I've always been jealous oh. of people that could. So and loads of me at my school could like I can burp the alphabet, or I can burp to ten, and I could never do it, and I oh. always felt a bit sad. And now, now you know, think of all the jobs I could have had if I could have burped the alphabet, or there must have been all these fancy job interviews for big jobs where they say, you know, what can you bring to the team? Oh, I work great as a team, and can you burp the alphabet? And I've been like, oh no, oh, and then no. I didn't get it, you know. That's the yeah. thing. I, I was always jealous of people who could burp the alphabet and, and burp burp on command because I, mm. I can't. Um, but um, uh, but I like um, I like burps and farts that are a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you know when you're just walking along happily and then all of a sudden you burp and you didn't know you were going to. Yes. So when yes. I'm surprised by my own body, those are my favourites, where you're walking along and you're suddenly like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. Whoa! And because you're so relaxed, it's proper loud and big and like, that was a, you know, or like, you know, you're, you're just sort of sitting there and then, and, you, and you're happily just sitting there and then all of a sudden your body farts and you had no idea you were going to. Yeah. You know, when you're like, I, I didn't I, even uh... feel the build up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I try I try to be healthy and and I go for runs. I go for a run and and often on a run I get totally surprised by a burp because your body's going woo, 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 when you run yeah. and then I'll be in the middle of a run and suddenly I'm just going burp and and <laughs> and I'll often be running past someone and it'll be like I've just given them this fright of their life and I'll just burp Aah! and then I'll run away and it's something really exciting about it that I've become like a phantom burper of the area. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I th yeah. Those are my favourites. So and they're maybe cats are just a bit too cool for that. Maybe they're too cool to to do that. Yeah. And I, I do just, uh, it's, it's probably as a final thought on this, I do wonder, you know, what, they, they couldn't really put a meow in a burp. I, I sort of feel like that'd be quite, I can't even imagine how that would oh, sound. Very hard, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah, I don't think you could. Yeah. They don't. No. I don't think they fart, though. Cats. I've never heard my cat fart. Dogs Definitely. do because you can smell it. 
Yeah, I, I, when I was younger, I had cats, and I, you could definitely smell when they farted. There was All right, maybe they just do quiet, stealthy ones. Yeah, the cats it's, are it's quite stealthy, deadlies, aren't they? Yeah. They just yeah. they they saunter past you like, oh hi, but what they're doing is like one of those slow one hundred foot farts. You know the ones yeah. where you walk along and it just keeps going. Yeah. The ones that there's well, some people call them silent but violent, which is a nice rhyming, but I we always call them silent but deadly. It's silent called, but deadly. Which doesn't rhyme, but I feel like is more ninja like. Yeah, and might be a little bit more factual. Because mm. they are yeah. deadly. They're really deadly. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, thank you, Ruth. I think those are two incredibly comprehensive answers for Cheesy Puff. And I hope that in the one million years of, of, of their existence, that, that, that you know, those are the answers that they've been looking for. I, I mean, I really hope that we've, the sea. Yeah. We, we've answered some questions there for you uh, that, you know, have been really sticking on your mind for 100 million years or whatever. You know, that's a long time to be thinking yeah. about bee bottoms. It is. It is. But, you Were know, there bees? A hundred million years ago, or a mit, a mit. Probably, probably just really old ones. <laughs> yeah, or maybe big, big dinosaur ones. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go vom, go vom. <laughs> they like fly towards you. That'd be terrifying. Yeah. yeah. A dinosaur. They'd bin. have to find really big flowers. It'd be really annoying for them. Yeah. Maybe that's why they got smaller. Yeah. Just you know, practical. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so many thoughts. I mean, you know, these are very deep questions that Cheesy Puff has asked, and there's a, there's a lot to both of them. And uh, you know, I I I feel we could have talked for years, but obviously, I know, I know you've got a lot to to get on with. Have you got much on today apart from not roly polying and and? Uh, I'm not going to be roly polying. Coffee. I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to plant some radishes today. Whoa! That's what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to go and buy some radishes because. I want some radishes now, but I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't planted the radishes, so I can see that being a problem. Yeah, yeah, that's my problem. That's why. Uh, that's why my uh, growing of vegetables has always been so poor because I'm like, well, I want them now though. Yeah, I don't want to wait a month. Buy radishes, plant them, then dig them up immediately, and then eat them and go. And go oh, grow some radishes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You do. <laughs> yeah, save you a lot of time. Yeah. 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 All right. That's yeah. what I'm doing today. I'm buying some radishes <laughs> to plant and dig up immediately and eat. <laughs> well, very good luck with that. Thank you so much for answering Cheesy Puff's question. It's a joy to have you on the show. Uh, and well, uh, thank good luck with me. all the not roly polying and, and not floating off. Best of luck with that. I'm going to try and not float off. That's going to be my, my life goal. Just don't float off. Don't float off, people. Don't float Just, off. That's a message for everyone at home. Don't float <laughs> off. Yeah. The rhinoceros is our world's armoured giant. Like a tank on legs. Big, big thanks to Ruth for answering Cheesy Puff's important questions and for all the cat wisdom and, of course, for not doing any roly-polies. It would have been very awkward if she'd floated off during our chat. And you? What? I said roly-polies, not rhino-pinos. At you? Oh, that is so annoying. If you have any questions you need answers for um, or you want to send us in jokes or anything really, then do get your blabbering gib faces to help you email us at podcast at comedyclubforkids.co.uk. And don't forget, if you're in the UK, you can um, email in your favourite facts too and you might win a six-month Britannica magazine subscription, which is very exciting. Also, do check out our comedyclubforkids.store for Stinky Hippo and Linda t-shirts galore and check out our live shows at comedyclubforkids.co.uk. We are at so many festivals this summer, including the Edinburgh Fringe, camp festivals, both of them, and so many many more so do come and see us live unless you're a rhino of course achoo because i don't want to see you live achoo or in fact anywhere achoo why am i still sneezing this is ridiculous there definitely isn't a rhino around it <coughs> what was that where were you hiding well that explains it doesn't it there was a massive rhino in comedy club for kids hq all along and it was just it was wearing a straw hat which must have made it all worse must have been hiding behind the palm pot can you go away please because i'm allergic achoo Thanks, bye. Nice to meet you. Oh, phew. Now I can breathe properly, thank goodness. But why have I got little red spots on my arms and chest and legs? That looks like chicken pox to me. <laughs> no! <laughs> bye! You have been listening to Comedy Club for Kids Presents. <laughs> Radio Dobbs.
nonsense. Radio nonsense. Radio nonsense. Radio nonsense. Radio nonsense. It's the end.